What's up everyone? This is the next video in a series in which we break down the coaching candidates for the Knicks next head coaching position. The last video, we broke down the pros and the cons of Coach Thibodeau. And in this video, we're gonna break down the pros and the cons of Mike Miller. Before we get started, if you like videos like this, please subscribe and like the video as your support is very much appreciated. Mike Miller officially became the interim head coach of the Knicks on December 7th, 2019. And while the Knicks were still a bad team, there was significant improvement that I will explain later in the video. In fact, Leon Rose and Scott Perry were so impressed with Miller that they stated they wanted him back in some capacity next season. Even if Miller doesn't get promoted to head coach, he more than likely will remain on the coaching staff. The pros of keeping Mike Miller is that he was able to improve the team after he took it over, he has a strong record of player development, and he helps the Knicks to maintain continuity. The negatives of Mike Miller is that he has very little experience as a coach on the NBA level. Now, as stated before, one of the biggest pros that Mike Miller has going for him is how he improved the team after he was promoted to head coach. When Miller took over, the team was a miserable 4-18, and and in the 44 games he had them, they jumped to 17 and 27. Now, obviously, 17 and 27 isn't good, but that's a nice improvement, especially with how flawed the roster is. So how did Miller manage to improve the team so much? One of the biggest ways Mike Miller improved the team was his management of Julius Randle. Randle's numbers under Miller really improved. In his first 22 games under Fisdale, Randall averaged 16 and a half points and eight and a half boards on 44% shooting. Since Miller has taken over, those numbers have gone up to 19.5 points and 9.7 boards a game on 46% shooting. The main reason Randall improved on the Miller was because Miller put Randall in positions to get set up for baskets instead of using him to run the offense. A huge part of the issue with Randall earlier in the season was how Fisdale foolishly utilized Randall. When Randall averaged 21 points per game in New Orleans, most of his points came off being set up by New Orleans guards. On the Knicks, Fisdale tried to make Randall a number one option, which was a bad idea. The reason for this is because Randall isn't a great offensive creator and he doesn't have the basketball IQ to make the right reads when the help defense comes. When Randall is asked to take too much responsibility in terms of running the offense, he becomes a turnover machine. Now, under Mike Miller, Randall was a lot more efficient. A huge part of this is because under Miller, instead of isolating Randall every play on the block, he put him in more pick and roll situations and off the ball situations to get him easier baskets. Here, Peyton gives Randall the ball from up top like a running back and Randall attacks the basket and draws an and one. This is a good play because instead of asking Randall to create something out of nothing, he only needs to take two dribbles before he's right at the rim. Here, Julius Randle does pick and roll with Alfred Payton and gets a nice shot in the paint and makes it. Again, plays like this that set up Randle is way better offense than asking for him to post up. Again, Payton gives the ball to Randle from the top of the key and all Randle has to do is take two dribbles to finish at the rim. Here, Randle is gonna find his man ball watching then he's gonna to cut to the basket and get himself a nice easy dunk. Under Mike Miller, Randall was able to improve because instead of using Randall as a point forward like Fizz foolishly did, Miller put Randall in more sets that got him in better positions to score. As we just saw, Randall is a lot more effective when he only has to take one to two dribbles to score. Mike Miller's ability to better utilize Randall shows that he's a very good coach. Another way Miller was able to improve the team was by improving the Knicks' defense. When the Knicks fired David Fisdale, the Knicks were ranked 25th in defensive efficiency, allowing 113 points for 100 possessions. Under Miller, the Knicks' defense jumped to 23rd in defensive efficiency, allowing 110 points per 100 possessions. Now, this is just modest growth, but it is growth nonetheless. And this is in large part due to the new defensive schemes that Miller brought. One of the things that the Knicks were able to do well defensively under Miller is limit points in the paint. In fact, according to NBA.com, the Knicks allowed the fourth least amount of points in the paint 
which is right up there with some of the better defenses in the league, like the Heat and the Clippers. The last big strength of Mike Miller I want to talk about is player development. The Knicks are a young rebuilding team, so it's incredibly important that the Knicks head coach of the Knicks to get the young players like RJ Barron and Mitchell Robinson to maximize their potential. Now, obviously, Mike Miller has only coached one year in the NBA, so there isn't really strong evidence of player development at the NBA level. But Miller did do a good job of helping young players to grow in the G League. Mike Miller coached the Westchester Knicks from 2015 to 2019. In 2018, Coach Miller won the Coach of the Year Award in the G League as he coached the Westchester Knicks to the number one seed in the East that year. Now that same season, five of the players on the Knicks got called up from the G League and all of them credit Mike Miller for their development. Here's what John Jenkins, who last played for the Washington Wizards, had to say about Mike Miller. He's one of the best coaches I've ever had in my professional career. He's number one as far as giving me an opportunity and challenging me every day. I owe tons of my success here to him. Sometimes in this league, NBA and professional in general, you're only as good as your coach lets you be. He's letting me go out there and play every night and put me in situations for me to shine and that's all I can ask for. Here's what Paul Watson, who currently plays for the Toronto Raptors today, had to say about Miller. There were days where we kind of really weren't pushing each other and that's when he really was there for us and to get the most out of us. Coach Miller is big on development. He's helped me in a lot of many different ways. And both Watson and Jenkins aren't the only ones. Most of Miller's former players in the G League have given Miller a ringing endorsement in regards of his player development. One of the reasons that Miller is such a great developer is that he puts players in the best position to succeed as we just saw the way he utilized Julius Randle. The last pro of keeping Mike Miller is that bringing him back as head coach helps the Knicks to have continuity, which is pretty underrated in rebuilding a team. Mike Miller has known the Knicks since 2019, and he coached many of the players this season who will be on the Knicks next season. Promoting an in-house candidate as head coach gives the Knicks player familiarity, which will bode well going into next season as they already know Miller's system. A huge reason why the Knicks always fail to build their teams is because they always replace their coaches after every two seasons. Continuity is important. If you look at most teams that rebuilt their teams well, those teams allowed their coach to stick around because that familiarity is important for the development of the team. Every time you fire and hire a new coach, you're essentially pressing the reset button as that new coach is going to implement a completely new system. It's about time the Knicks allow a coach to stay and develop a team for at least the next three to five years. Lastly, we'll talk about cons and there really aren't too many cons with Mike Miller, but the main con with Miller is his lack of experience on the NBA level. Now, as we've discussed with Miller, he actually has had plenty of success on the G League level, but the G League and the NBA are two completely different levels of competition. While Miller is undeniably a good coach, many in the organization may feel more inclined to go with a coach that has more experience, especially with more experience with a winning team. This is probably the main reason why Tom Thibodeau is currently the leading candidate amongst the Knicks front office. As unlike Mike Miller, Tom Thibodeau has a strong history of winning with both the Chicago Bulls and the Minnesota Timberwolves. So there you have it, Knicks fans. Those are the main pros and cons of bringing Mike Miller back as head coach. Now, Miller personally isn't my first choice, but I would be happy if Miller is promoted as head coach next year due to his strong history of player development. What do you guys think though? Should Mike Miller be next year's head coach? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day.